Over two weeks after our Model 3's delivery, we finally have our permanent charge hookup installed in our garage. Unlike almost every video we watched ahead of our delivery, where people's electrical boxes were actually located in the same space where their charger was being installed, ours was actually located on the opposite side of our house, almost 75 feet away. So I wanted to talk about that experience, as well as talk about all the different charge options that you have when you purchase a Tesla. Hi everyone, it's Max, and let's talk about home charging for your Tesla. Before I get into the details of my own personal experience, let's first talk about the main options that you should consider when you're looking at home charging for your electric vehicle. And well, the first is no home charging. With Tesla's current network of superchargers, as well as third-party chargers available, this is becoming more and more of a viable option for people who don't want to invest into installing charging in their own homes. When it comes to the upfront cost, it's zero dollars to do this. And there's a pretty hefty investment with buying an electric vehicle to begin with. So this is becoming more and more appealing to most consumers that are trying to break into their first EV, but not necessarily spend all that money. The big drawback here is the cost of charging in a station is significantly more expensive than if you were to charge at home running on your own meter. If saving on gas was the primary reason that you got into an EV to begin with, then you're essentially eroding a good amount of that savings by going to a station with this option. Further, convenience-wise, you're really jammed up. Charging in a station will take 25 to 45 minutes on average, depending on your charge level when you get there, and that's at a supercharger. If you're at another third-party charger, the charge time can be much longer. Therefore, having your days planned around a charge or having your whole schedule wrap around your charge is not something that average consumer is really gonna wanna deal with. So that aside, let's get into actual home charging options that you might wanna consider. The first of these options is charging with the standard 120 volt outlet. Most people are pretty surprised to hear that you can actually plug in a Tesla and charge it with a standard home outlet that exists in most garages. This is considered level one charging, which is also considered trickle charging due to the low amount of energy you're actually putting on your car when you're plugged into this type of outlet. This puts on about three miles per hour, which is slightly less than 1% per hour on our Model 3 long range. It's not a very efficient option for this reason. Further, if your temps get too low, your car won't charge at all, since it'll be using all of its energy to pull in heat to the battery to get it prepped for charge and then not have anything left to charge it itself once that's happened. If you purchased your car before April 2022, your car actually came with its own mobile charger that already has the hookup to do this charging. So if you happen to get your car at this time, doing this option costs you nothing out of pocket and base. However, if you're like me and got your car more recently, it came with no mobile charger, which means the initial upfront base investment to do a level one charge is the cost of a Tesla mobile connector, which runs right now at $230 US. No further installation costs are required for this, assuming that you already have an outlet wherever you're charging the car. Something to note about this is that the mobile connector for Tesla is not rated for outdoor use. It is not waterproof or water resistant. So if you are not parking your car in a covered area or a garage, this isn't really an option for you. Over the past two weeks while we waited for our actual permanent charging solution to be installed, we were stuck with this type of charge situation. The amount of times I plugged in my car to that outlet and saw 24 plus hours of charging had me experiencing what many call range anxiety for the first time. Since this car is becoming our new primary mode of transport, we had to supplement a supercharger multiple times just to make this work for us in the two short weeks that we were using the car. This kept the car from dropping below a percentage where we would feel uncomfortable driving on the road. Making impromptu longer trips than anything we'd planned in advance basically were impossible while we're using this type of charging. Beyond that, for whatever reason, this type of charger kept tripping our circuit breaker. Our house was built in 2018, so the system should have been able to handle this type of charging. When I talked to the electrician about it, it appeared that the way they had hooked up the different outlets together in a daisy chain on that particular circuit was overly safe, so it was tripping the breaker unnecessarily. I'm not an electrician, these are his terms. But regardless of the reasoning, waking up to realize that my car had been plugged in but not charged for some period of time when it was getting so little charge to begin with was not something that we could have dealt with long term. Also, the particular electrical provider in our area provides no incentives for level one charging, so all the discounted rates that you can potentially get for 
non-peak hours charge time were not applicable for us if we chose to continue using the 120 volt outlet. All this together to make this not the option that we were willing to go with long term whatsoever. The next option and the one we actually ended up going with was an outlet that could accept level two charging hookups from the mobile connector. For the sake of this conversation, we're gonna talk about the one we specifically installed for, which is the NEMA 1450 electrical outlet. But there are several other options, depending on where you live and what you have and what your box can handle, that Tesla offers as alternate hookups for the mobile connector. The NEMA 1450, as I said, is considered level two charging and it works on a 240 volt outlet. This gives you about 30 miles per hour of charge, which is a substantial jump from the previous option. This is also where price increases and becomes more variable depending on your hookup situation. To begin with, you again need to invest in a mobile connector if your car did not come with one. So whatever we discussed previously, your base cost starts with that at the bare minimum. If your car did come with one, it didn't come with a NEMA 1450 adapter. So that means you'll be investing about $45 to get that adapter in addition to the mobile connector that your car came with. If you purchased the mobile connector after they stopped including them with the car, it does come with this adapter by default. However, you're still starting at that $230 price tag to get that mobile connector with your car. So that becomes the base cost before outlet installation. Depending on your electrical boxes distance from the outlet placement, Assuming your breaker box can handle it to begin with, I've seen prices fluctuate between $300 and $2,500. And that does not include any modifications to your electrical system. If you need to upgrade your box to handle this type of connection, that's additional cost on top of that. This charger can again only be used inside a garage because the mobile connector is not meant for the outdoors. But as a level two charger, this does allow you to qualify for electrical incentives in most places if a level one charge does not. While this can end up being quite the investment, it ended up being the choice as it provided us enough charge for our daily needs while also being the cheaper option compared to the next option that we're gonna talk about. Which brings us to our final choice, hardwiring a home charging system within your charge location. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna focus on Tesla's home charging unit, but know there are a plethora of other brand options out there that actually offer rebates depending on your electrical provider. So you may be able to get one of these for free instead of the Tesla connector, if it makes sense in your area with the benefits that your electrical provider are providing. Now the Tesla wall charger unit itself currently runs for $475. It requires hardwiring its own electrical circuit directly into the electrical box, just like your NEMA 1450 outlet. And this actually gives you an additional boost of 44 miles per hour of charge. It can be installed both indoors and outdoors, so that's an added benefit over using the outlet and mobile charger. And it can actually be daisy chained together with other Tesla wall chargers. So if you happen to be a household that requires multiple chargers, it could make sense because on a single circuit, you could have multiple chargers wired together versus having individual circuits run for individual outlets. The quotes I saw online for this were anywhere between $1,000 and $5,000. Although I have to believe the higher end of that is for the absolute extreme case where you have to have major work done to get this installed. Either way, it seemed to average higher than just getting an outlet installed like for the NEMA 1450. We opted not to go with this option since the base charger cost was higher as well as the expected install cost being higher as well. For the distance you're getting per hour of added charge, it really wasn't worth it to us. Really the speed of charge was inconsequential given that we could get 30 miles per hour on a NEMA 1450 and that would be plenty enough for anything that we'd be using this car for. For me, unless you're planning to go all in on Tesla and have multiple Teslas in your garage and daisy chain those chargers together, it really does not make a whole lot of sense to buy this particular charger. Or if you're in a circumstance where you have to charge outside, in which case the mobile connector is not an option for you, then again, this might make sense for you. However, for the average consumer, this option is probably overkill. Of course, there is the cool factor of having one of these in your garage. So if money's really burning a hole in your pocket, feel free to invest in one. It would be cool to have, just something that I wouldn't say is necessary. Something to also consider about these types of chargers is that if you happen to have a rear wheel drive Model 3 or Model Y, they're capped at 32 amps. 
So it actually can't even accept the 44 miles per hour of charge that this type of charger allows. Meaning that you're not gonna get any more benefit from having one of these than from having a NEMA 1450 with a mobile connector. So if you have one of those types of vehicles, I would rule this out immediately. But yeah, that's a very high level look at the different charge options that you have when establishing home charging. So from here, let's get into my actual NEMA 1450 install. Like I said at the beginning of the video, my electrical panel was in my basement on the opposite side of the house to my garage. While my basement itself was unfinished, so we didn't need drywall work, it was still about a 75 foot run to have that wire connect from the electrical outlet directly to where the charger needed to be in my garage. And that wire is not cheap for that type of connection. When choosing an electrician, we essentially just went on Google and asked for quotes from multiple highly rated companies within our area that would do EV type chargers. And we got a range of quotes for the same work. It started with $2,300 for the install, down to $1,800 for the install. And then the one we ended up settling on was an offer right around $1,400 which we took. Given these different quotes for the same work, definitely recommend if you are getting an electrician to come out there and do the work, get those multiple quotes so you get the best possible deal while still making sure you're getting good quality work. Given that 1400 was pretty much right in the middle of the online range that I had looked at prior to getting the quotes themselves, I was comfortable thinking that we were getting a reasonable deal, especially considering that the distance from my box and the outlet install was probably as far as it could possibly be. And the only way it could be more complicated was if they had to do a ton of drywall work as a part of the install. So from here, I'll show you what the actual run looked like. So as you can see, the company ran this thick wire from our electrical box all the way through the basement ceiling up and out of the basement wall. An added complication for our setup was that we park our Tesla in the third car garage space in our three car garage since we'd have trouble maneuvering our SUV into that spot and the Tesla fit there nicely. This part of the garage actually extends past the main basement area of the house and therefore a wire cannot be run directly through the basement ceiling to get to that finished area. So to avoid doing a ton of drywall work or having to use even more of that wire to get around the entire garage once you fed up into it, we actually opted to have the wire come out of the wall of our basement outside of the house and back in through the back wall of the garage. I wasn't initially thrilled about having to do this, but I trusted our electrician's judgment and they said they do about 10 of these a week and this was the best possible, most low maintenance solution to get the wire run exactly where we wanted it within our garage space. And given that the company promised to seal all the entry exit points of that wire, we let them go ahead with this method of wiring it into our garage. From there, it was just a matter of running that wire to the desired position within the garage. And here you can see the final results. I also went ahead and installed the mounting hardware for the charger and the cable for a clean look and more organized space where the charger was concerned. And I have to say, the thing works great. This was definitely more work and more cost than I initially expected, but given the breaker box's location versus the garage, the company did their best to make it work and I do feel that I got a fair deal out of it. I really did trust their judgment and they did come highly recommended. It took a little over two weeks to get the estimate and get them booked which is why we were without our permanent charging solution and using level one charging for such a stretch of time. So it was a great relief to finally get this settled and installed. We're very happy with how it turned out, the way it looks, and obviously the speed of charging. Basically now, we only have to plug in every few days to maintain a healthy charge level, which is fantastic. But yeah, that's all I had for today. If you have similar or different charge experiences, please share them in the comments below. If you think I missed anything else about options or things to consider with the different home charging options, post that in the comments as well. And as always, if you like this video and you wanna see more, please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. Thank you for watching. Until next time.